What's going on guys? Chris from Subi Mods. This is episode three of our Subi vlog. I'm kind of doing this retroactively. We jumped into it yesterday and kind of skipped over the intro. So I'm doing the intro now. Uh, like I said, episode three of our Subi vlog. Today we're going to be tackling some of the easier mods, the easier first mods you can do to your VA, WRX or STI after you just get it. These aren't the easiest mods, we'll be honest. Um, but these are mods that we kind of felt could seem daunting to newer customers and we're kind of just trying to inspire you, show you that it's doable uh, to the everyday person. So the three mods that we picked, good ones, effective ones that get your bang for your buck right out of the box with these mods. First one, braided brake lines. A great upgrade and Nick will uh, explain the intricacies in the upcoming clip. The second mod that we got for you guys, we got a master cylinder brace. We're doing this mainly because we're already gonna be up there topping off the brake fluid and it's an easy mod that you can do. And one of the most common, most popular mods when everyone gets their Subaru is a muffler delete. You wanna let that boxer rumble. We're gonna show you the benefits to this and kinda show you that you can do it with a couple tools, you know, a little bit of effort, a little bit of elbow grease. Um, so yeah. You guys, we're gonna jump into yesterday when we did the brake lines. It went okay as, uh, you know, it usually does when you're working on a car. So we're gonna jump into that. Uh, Nick's gonna take over and let's get to it. Three. What? <laughs> Doing <laughs> episode three. We're gonna show you guys one of the best things about the STI is the brakes. That's why you spend the extra couple thousand, more like five, six, seven thousand, I think. Brakes and transmission. That's what you get with the STI, but they're not perfect. All right, this car has what, 15,000 on it? Uh, like 15, like like 15 16. Yeah. At that point, unless you drive wrong, um, your brakes and rotors should be pretty well, they should have some life in them. And when I say wrong, if you're driving on the track, obviously you'll burn them out faster. But for a street car, if you burn through rotors and pads at 15,000 miles or less, you probably downshift a little. Brendan. Hit <laughs> that piece again? <laughs> Um, when we talk about the brake system, right, there's, there's a couple different ways you can do the upgrades. So everything on the STI is very high performance, right? You have drilled rotors, you have big six piston brakes, very strong pads, but you have these very like just kind of chintzy rubber line. So what ends up happening is you have expansion and heat in the brake system and that expansion travels to the weakest point. It's kind of like the, you know, the arms can't lift if you can't. <laughs> Shout out, I benched 25. Irrelevant. For three. <laughs> so when you upgrade, like, or you have a really upgraded brake system, it's gonna unfortunately fail at the weakest point. So it's only as good as the weakest point, which in this case is the brake lines. That leads to decreased pedal feel. It kind of feels sluggish as it gets warmer. So what you can do to start is you can get stainless lines in there, you can get good brake fluid, and you can add the last piece, which isn't a requirement, but it's the master cylinder brace. So we're gonna just do all three. Sometimes we will recommend customers do them in stages just to help with like understanding the benefits of each, but you know, we'll take the shotgun approach and uh, throw a, uh, yeah, throw a Baker Mayfield. So we're gonna be using Faction Fab lines. Faction Fab, new brand in the industry, but they make very high quality stuff. These are all stainless steel braided. They come with everything, new C-clips, new fittings, washers, the whole tent. And they're actually really affordable. I think they're only about like 50 bucks a pair. So the side note is, is we get to put this handy dandy, oh, look at that. It's like one of the- uh, It's one of those Russian dolls. Yeah. Um, um, so those are great, obviously, for keeping the, uh, the brake fluid in the reservoir, right? A lot of people forget when you're bleeding the lines, you have to be equally refilling it with new fluid. If you suck the master cylinder dry, you will have a very strong left leg as you repump it to get the air out. You'll be there for a while. The next thing, we'll just go with a 12 mil socket, a C-clip tool to remove the actual line attachment from the strut. And then this is the most important one. This is a brake line tool. Well, it's not necessarily a brake line tool, but it's what you would use to remove the brake line. If you do not use one of these, or you try to use an adjustable wrench or a standard wrench, you are going to likely strip the line. And when you strip the line, good luck but that video is not gonna be covering this. We're, we're gonna be doing it correctly. So if you don't have one of these and you're very eager to do your brake lines, get in your car while it still has brakes and go get this wrench because- Where can you get it? I'm sure, you know, this one probably comes from AutoZone, but uh, 
Harbor Freight. Shout out to Harbor Freight. Right. Um, and the one thing we don't have here is a bucket for the fluid. Sorting shelf. That looks like a bucket to me. So there's a couple schools of thought on it. Everyone gets real excited, wants to pull this line off. Start here, get it off of the strut. That way, when you actually go to remove the lines, you don't have to sit there and fiddle with it while it drips brake. So this is really straightforward. It's just simply completely off. I'm about to smash my hand on that, so. This is a pretty simple job. Now, while we work, let's talk about, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, brakes are scary. Yeah, they are. They're pretty fundamental to the vehicle. Um, but it's not that hard to, to work with them. You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you just have to watch what you're doing, right? So as you spin in the back of the caliper, there are some schools of thought that say you don't need to use one of these wrenches on this side of it. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't kind of really, you know, change much. You might be able to get more leverage on it with a standard socket, but just for simplicity. Use what we got and put the bucket underneath <laughs> the fluid area. And now, in full transparency, they did reinstall the brakes and the car hasn't been bled since. You may lose more fluid than this. It, it will go pretty significantly. So um, just keep that in mind. The drip will be more real. So these, these clips are a bit weird, right? So I'm gonna spin it around and hopefully Chris can zoom in on this. Your best bet, they're like, it requires some, some finger dexterity. You wanna separate and then pull back. So once you get that off, what you'll basically have is you'll have this, it'll be free floating. Now, so a lot of people get caught up on, well, you know, hey, I put the wrench on it and it's just spinning, you know, what's happening? Well, there's a tab here and there's a flat side, right? You can see that, see it right there. there it is. Right here. So what you'll do is you'll wanna keep that depressed you know, against the flat stock there so it doesn't move. Slide your pipe wrench up, oh, it's this side. You wanna be having that pipe wrench on this side, you wanna be pulling towards you, all right? Ready? Can you see? Yep. All right, and we're just gonna, now I kinda broke that just a second ago, but you're gonna wanna back it out. Obviously, remove, pull, OEM line. Very, very nice. So in the bucket, brake lines, that's the rear, right? Yeah. So we'll go front. Sorry to the package. All right. Now, so basically what you'll get is you always kind of want to do what you can to use new. If they provide it, it's always best. Two C clips, and then we have our yeah, and then we have our C clips. So it's a very important thing. The amount of calls that we get that say, well, I don't know why my brake lines are seeping, right? Let's do proper and improper. That's a no-go. This is 50% correct, but in this case, we need 100. So, that's correct. Don't mean to be rude, but you know, you gotta get this right, this is very important. <laughs> so, a lot of times, what you'll find is that you can pretty much begin to fit the line right where it goes, right? You can kind of just do your rough mock-up. So you can kind of pretty much start to fit all of the pieces together. All right, it's very hard to see where my current head is at. All right. Got a big head. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> Mike Scott. Um, you will you will have 100% less braking power if you miss a crush wall. It's one of these washers. <laughs> you will have no braking power. You mean the brake fluid is important? It, it does have to stay in the caliper. Where are we now? So, basically, at this point, you'll kind of just want to reattach it and kind of go smooth with it, you know, because it's very easy to kind of strip these. There's a lot of, like, of the under sealant they spray on these lines to prevent corrosion on this fitting. So sometimes you can get marred up there and, and it's very unfortunate when it happens because you know, it's, it's a hard fix. So once you mock everything up, put this. So we're gonna drop that in there. So at this point, the traditional, you know, tighten it up. Um, and pretty much we'll start kind of just putting everything back together as we proceed. And that socket's going the wrong way. Basically do the same for all four. 
Uh, yes, I mean, there's also, as far as a sequence goes, there's different like debates on should you start with this caliper, the one closest to the master, or the one furthest away from it. That's more pertinent when, in my opinion, when you're bleeding the system than when you're actually removing the lines. We'll get to bleeding it, but yes, when you do bleed them, you do want to start with the furthest away from the master cylinder location, and then you want to kind of follow that in succession. So you go passenger, rear, driver, rear, passenger, front, front, here. And that, there's some logic behind that, but it's boring, so just follow that instruction. So, um, at this point, you know, you can kind of lock yourself in there, and you can basically start your tightening of the original fitting, the chassis side fitting, into the um, new Faction Fab line. Um, this is kind of painstaking, so we're gonna speed this up. All right, so line is on, and we noticed something, or Chris pointed it out, and I didn't really even think of it. Um, he noticed that, we'll oh, let him zoom in. You see how it looks like there's a lot of threads exposed on this um, fitting here from the brake line. So like, it just doesn't look tight. I can assure you, it is fully tight. So another thing that I like to talk to some of the newer guys about is if you have a friend helping you with this project, something to keep in mind. A very good way of knowing how tight to make something is actually removing it yourself. If your boy or your friend or you know whoever, you're the neighbor, takes the thing off, you're not gonna know how much force to put back on it. And we see this a lot. I've seen people snap older calipers, like clean off. I've seen the bolts head snap right off because they think it has to be super tight. This is a hand tight, and then you maybe wanna just check it, like an eight, you know? Like just to be like, all right, you're good, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. Best way to know how tight something is, is either the best way to do it is to throw a torque wrench on it, but not everyone has that. And also, if you don't have a lift, I apologize, but this can be done on the ground. And it can. <laughs> <laughs> I hate doing things because I. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll deal with the pallet mallet. That was the weirdest hammering. So, we're tight here. We're good here, we're tight on the back. You can move on. Taking this back. I can't do this. Let's try this again. Flip attempt. <laughs> Got it. I win. Look at that. It flips in. That is one large battle for, for Chris. One very small, small win for him. <laughs> All right, here we are on day two of doing the brake lines. Yesterday, th things didn't exactly go as well. Kind of got caught up on this clip here, and also something that we noticed. We put this bracket in backwards, kind of. I'll show you what we mean. In our previous clip, we actually had this side of the line coming in this way, and the line coming out this way, coming in backwards. Basically, you don't want it like that. So, we swapped it around, put the new bolt in. We got the clip in, obviously, you saw that yesterday. 
and we got this rear bolt tightened. So now we move on to the rear. So the rear here is pretty much the same operation. So we've got this one 12 millimeter bolt right there. You've got your banjo bolt on the back and then take your line wrench, pop it on just like we did with the front, undo that, pop your little clip out here and repeat the process putting it in. So I'm gonna get the back done. All right, so I just finished putting on the rear brake lines. Got everything tightened up, bolt, bolted up. So now we're gonna do the most important thing and bleed the brakes. I'm gonna go grab Nick and we're gonna get this done. All right, so now while we're, while we're up here, the other easy mod before we get into bleeding all the brakes, brake master cylinder brace. Yes, so this is a bit of a process to put in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give you guys a quick overview of how it works and what it does. So can you give me a couple presses on the brake? All right, you see that right there? See that little movement? It's kind of hard, like, dude, real Like, you see that moving? It doesn't, it's not, and this, mind you, this is with unblit brakes. So you're getting, there's a lot of like air in the lines. You're not getting that full bite. This leads to that squishy pedal feel where you put your foot down, it feels like it's there, and then it's not there. These mods are very affordable uh, and they are actually quite easy to install. They mount right to this, to the frame of the vehicle right here. And they basically come across through to the lower part of the master cylinder brace and will actually mount in a way that just prevents that cylinder from shifting. And while it seems very innocuous, it works like very well. Like brake lines and master cylinder braces, two easy upgrades for these cars. We're gonna kind of just park this right there for now and uh, bleed the brakes. Bleed the brake. So what are you doing here? All right, so obviously you're gonna wanna get your hose into kind of a receptacle to drain it into. This is draining your old fluid out from what's already kind of in the system. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of keep pumping until we get through it. Basically, I'll call, uh, a pump and then I will crack the bleeder and he will basically depress the brake pedal 10 times. On the 10th one, I'll call a hold and then at that point we'll lock the bleeder and then we'll see what the air looks like. So we'll see the, uh, we'll see the fluid go through there and we will check to see if there's any bubbles in the air. Mm. Once it's clear, you know we're good on that bleeder. That is correct, yes. You ready? Pump it. All right, black, hold. All right, pump. There, hold on the next one. All right. So now it's a little bit of gravity here. I'm gonna drain that out. All right. So that one's blood. We'll check it again, but we're just giving you guys the, the rundown of how you kind of want to look at this, you know? All right, yeah. So we got the hose right on the, uh, the bleeder there. Got our open ended wrench. And let's bleed it. Pump it. There we go. Next one, hold it. Keep holding. And you are good on that side. Wait, so the side's all blood? As it looks, we'll probably go around it one more time after, but Put for now, that side is so we just got the ooh, microphone. So we just got the uh, first corner done. We're gonna top off with a little bit more fluid, as Nick suggested earlier. Not OSHA approved. Definitely not OSHA. If you have a lift, you should probably use the lowering feature on the lift instead of climbing a ladder. Right on. RIP code. Already, it's muffler delete time. Time to put these big old whoa, shiny boys on. So, what are we gonna need to do a muffler delete? Simple tools for this. We've got an open-ended wrench, 15 millimeter, and a 3 8 wrench with a 15 millimeter socket on it. So, something I just discovered. Our old hardware was a 15 millimeter. New hardware seems to be a 14. 
You can adjust for that. Some WD-40 to help with the hangers. Nice trusty screwdriver as well to help load up the new hardware, new hangers, new bolts, some gaskets, and of course your brand new muffler deletes. Get into it. All right, so your first step, you can take your open-ended and your ratcheting wrench. Simply put the open-ended on the front and your ratcheting wrench on the back and loosen. Like that, break them free. You get this one. Break that free. That means So now it's time for the exhaust hangers. This is probably the least fun part because exhaust hangers can be a little tricky sometimes. They don't really like to uh, budge. But the best way that we found is really just to grease them up. You can either use some soapy water or trusty WD-40. All you gotta do is, if you can see that, we'll let that soak in for a sec and then we'll take our screwdriver and help pop those off looped up and moved out of the way. Usually you can just slide the front one out and with that, you should be able to slide the second one back. And your sock muffler should come right off. It's a bit too heavy. Time for some weight reduction. Do the same to the other side. Trying to pop it in there, slide the front off. You should be able to pop the rear muffler off. All right, so now that we got the stock mufflers off, it's time to take off the stock hangers. Aftermarket muffler deletes and exhaust systems usually come with aftermarket hangers. Now, you can run the stock hangers, of course, you know, there's nothing really against that, but they do provide these, because usually this rubber's a bit thicker. Sometimes they'll be longer or shorter, or they'll have more holes for adjustment, um, as well as um, the red. They look cool. Why not just, why not put them in? You're already up in here. So, I'm gonna slap those in here, and then we'll get the uh, muffler deletes in. Here we go. And there we go. All the hangers are off. All right, aftermarket hangers are on. All right, it's time to put this muffler delete in. As you can see, we already kind of did the other side just to get an idea of how these were gonna go in. So again, we're gonna use our trusty friend WD-40. Just grease up both the holes in the hanger and the hanger posts themselves. That's just gonna help you really slide those in there because they kinda need a little bit of force to get them up in these new hangers. They're a bit stiff. Just force it on through there. That's what she said. Oh, that was easier than expected. And we'll slide this front one in. There we go. All right, muffler deletes are in. Now, let's take the new hardware that it came with. It came with two new gaskets. Those are gonna go between your OEM pipe and the new muffler delete. We got our new gasket and our trusty new hardware. Nice and shiny. The flat end of the gasket is gonna go on the same side as the muffler delete. Simply put that between the two and thread the bolts through. Nice. Repeat the process for the other side. Now that we've got the right tools, get this done. So now that your bolts are tight, at least tighter, you're gonna wanna go down and just hit it a little bit more, make sure those gaskets are nice and tight. Another helpful tip is after you get these installed and you start them up, check for leaks. 
If you know you hear a little bit of like a little bit of a buffeting in there, you might have a leak in one of the gaskets. It's always helpful to get up under there after you started it and uh, just tighten them down again. That sounds pretty good. Let's let it warm up. We'll do a little bit of revs. I think that sounds pretty good. Let's kill the car before we uh, die of carbon monoxide. All right, so real quick, why do we go with a muffler delete rather than a cat back? Well, simply put, it's a cheaper option. It's all good. So as I was saying, why do we go with a muffler delete? It's the cheaper option. You know, not everyone has $700, $1,000, $1,200 to drop on a really nice cat back system. Especially, you just bought the car, you know, like to opt with a muffler delete. It really allows you to get that sound out of your car without doing a full exhaust system. It's an easy install, um, plus it's lighter weight. I mean, look at this muffler here. That is a big boy. Our new muffler delete here. Way lighter. In conclusion, you get weight reduction, and it's easier on the wallet, and it's easier to install. So, <laughs> the brakes are all bled on the car. Uh, we're gonna put the wheels on, get it back down, but that about wraps it up for egg episode three. Not stop talking. That about wraps it up for episode three of our Subi vlog. Next week, we're gonna tackle some more modifications. Uh, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and follow along for more. Thank you.